So we're set to go with the next quarter final again. Two rounds. This is Joe Condon versus Mike Ricci. 30 and 29. Their ages respectively for the American and the Canadian. Both men six feet tall. Very similar across the board until you get to the reach. And Ricci has a three inch advantage there. So another international go around. Two rounds in the eight man tournament to see who will move on to take on Islam Mamadov in semifinal number one. And the lovely Michelle Cerner gets us started here in Phoenix, the Valley of the Sun. This is World Series of Fighting 25, eight-man lightweight tournament. This is quarterfinal number two between Mike Ricci in the white trunks and Joe Condon in the green and black. Mike Ricci, likely our most well-known and famous fighter in tonight's tournament, definitely the tallest fighter in tonight's tournament, at just over six foot one inches tall. To put that in perspective, Todd, I'm six foot tall, so Ricci's taller than me, and I've got him by close to 90 pounds. Makes for a lot to deal with in the lightweight division. It's a very unique skill set, just dealing with that reach. Ricci leads with the cross. They get clenched up here. Joe Conant digs double underhooks, pushes him right into the fence. Not what usually happens to a guy with the height and the leverage advantage. Ricci's going to have to get one of these long arms inside. As long as Joe Conant is hugging Ricci's body like this, he's going to be in control of his position. Good, good. Repumble, repumble, repumble. I want him on the fence. Todd, do you think anybody can hear you and I on this broadcast <laughs> over say, Joe Stevenson? Are we going to pay Joe Stevenson a fee for doing side play-by-play? I feel like we need to disclose to the audience whose voice that is because they probably recognize it. Joe Daddy, Joe Stevenson sitting just to our right. The man coaching Joe Condon tonight. Oh, and a big kick lands on the right side of Condon. He just waves it off. And no follow-up from Ricci. No reaction from Condon. And then no follow up from Ricci, almost like it didn't happen. See, old, if a tree falls in the woods at it right there. Apparently, we know the answer now. Yes, it does make a sound. Ricci's going to have to be a little bit busier here. Both guys looking for an opening. Jay, what do you think the chances are these guys are coming to this thing knowing in quarterfinal number one, if I can get a stoppage submission and knock out in round number one, I'm saving myself a lot of work. That's one That's one school of thought, Todd. It's, it's either one way or the other. They're thinking, let's go in there, let's get done, let's get in the back and stay uh, as fresh as we can. And the other is, look, if I, if I go out and I do that sprint and I don't get what I'm looking for, I'm going to be stuck. They say if you go for the finish, you will not win the decision and largely in a fist fight. Right, that is true. One, three single head kick if he wants. Great kick there by Ricci. Condon fires back. Now Condon finally finding his range. Condon is the one stalking Ricci. Thus far in the fight, it would be we're halfway through the first round, which means we're a quarter way through this entire fight. And, and it is Condon that's stalking. You think Ricci is just waiting for that one big opening, that one kick that's going to land and set him down like that? What are you saying? Holy smokes, and that is it. Todd, you were saying something a second ago. I was, what, what was it was Mike Ricci looking for that one big kick, and on cue, Ricci fires off the kick, and it connects to Joe Condon's head and drops him to the canvas. All right, we got a couple of things going on here if this is caught for our fans at home. First off, Ricci left the ring. She's not allowed to do. And second, he was limping as he yeah, did it. As he went out, it was almost like he was looking for someone to take a look at his foot and see what exactly went on. We will not speculate. We'll have to get Mike Corey over there and see if he can find out. But again, wow. Well, a little smile on Ricci's face now. Hard to not speculate about that. Let's take a look at this highlight Whew. that you predicted, I would like to add. I said, was he looking for the big one kick? Oh. And there it was. And I'd like to give you my answer. It's yes. <laughs> the, the answer is yes, he was. Look at that. Oh. You know, that's the second time he landed that kick yeah. in this fight, Todd. The first one, uh, Joe was able to take really well. The second one got a little bit deeper in. The first one had some toes and some feet involved. This was more uh, ankle and even a little bit of the shin, and that's a very hard bone right there. Mike mm. Ricci looking to swarm our referee, Chris, doing an excellent Ooh. job. This one is over. Chris Tyone jumps in there and stops it. You know, you wonder, Condon may have been able to get up, but at that point, I think there was a, a second or two in there where he was not sure where he was. He was just instinctively trying to scramble back to his feet. And luckily, Ricci unable to connect on those two hammer fists before our referee was there to shut it down. 
So what a finish, an explosive finish for Mike Ricci in round number one, and he has done himself a favor now. Only working about two-thirds of a round, and now he gets to go back and rest for a good 45 minutes to an hour before he fights semifinal number one, where he will take on Islan Maimonov. With the official decision, we send it in to Jazz Securo. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Chris Tyone steps in and puts a stop to the fight at 2 minutes and 41 seconds of round number one. Officially a TKO due to strikes and your winner advancing to the semifinals, Mike the Martian Ritchie.